So I've got an idea to try out today. It might be a complete fail and might not work at all, but then it might just be a lot of fun. So we're gonna see what happens. Starting off with some Duralar paper. This is a translucent vellum type of paper. I'm gonna be using this to paint on or draw on or a combination of both. I've got my set of Jet Pens goodies that they sent me for that giveaway, which is a couple of brushes, a white gel pen, and a bunch of these Fine Tech metallic pigments. And of course, I'm gonna be using my standard watercolors, possibly some watercolor ground, which I have in a little jar here. This is a jam jar, <laughs> it doesn't come in these. Uh, and yeah, so I'm going to just start playing with stuff now and we'll see where this goes. First thing I'm doing here is I'm taking a drawing that I already had, but I wanted to just isolate a portion of it for this experiment because this was something that I'm playing with right now and I didn't really want to do the entire piece. Also, I wanted to try a different method than I've ever really used before. It's just a thought that I had. So first thing is that I am taking a ink pen and I am just transferring the portion of the drawing that I want to be addressing onto this smaller 4x4 four four inch sheet of Doralar. The next part is sort of the experimental aspect. I'm turning it backwards, flipping it over to the back side. And because the Duralar is translucent, you can still see the ink drawing through on the back side. And I'm covering that with Daniel Smith Clear Watercolor Ground. Now this is dry. I just painted it with the Clear Watercolor Ground. And that was because I wanted to use watercolors on this surface, which was translucent, so I could do the ink on the back side and have the watercolor on this side. This is a complete experimentation, by the way. <laughs> I haven't ever tried this before. So now I've got my Jet Pens toys. I have, first of all, this brush, which is brand new, so it's very stiff with the um, conditioner that they put on the brushes when you first buy them. I'm probably going to have to soak that in the water for a little bit in order for it to become usable. And I have the other finer tipped one. Let's see, this one also has a little bit of stuff on it, so I'm going to soak that as well. Both of these guys. It takes a little while sometimes to soften the bristles up and you can massage it with your fingers and that'll start to loosen up in a little bit. All right, now what else I got here? I have my trusty watercolor palette with my 37 whole colors there and my mixing palette which could probably be cleaned out, but I'll probably use these little bits of neutral colors anyway. And I've got these shiny little pigments, and I totally want to use these. Not quite sure exactly how. I'm thinking that this dragon is going to be a pretty bright green one. He is a succulent dragon after all, and I think that I'm going to have him with standard watercolor greens that meld towards the edges of these leaf scales into the metallic green color and maybe touches of some of these other ones. We'll see as we go how the colors work out. That's the plan. The first thing I begin with is mixing a few of the colors that I'm going to be using, mostly various greens, um, different kinds of greens that I'm going to be painting for the dragon's main body, and I'm using the larger of the two brushes that I have. It's about the size of a standard size 4 brush, except it's got a much longer body to it 
because it is more of an Asian calligraphy style brush than a standard watercolor. But it makes for a, a, a brush tip that holds a lot of liquid, which is great for doing washes like this. And then I'm switching over to the smaller fine brush to do sh shadows and details We're using a dry brush technique. And I'm also adding in a little bit of the fine tech metallic pigments at this point, pulling out the watercolor, standard watercolor paints out to the edges and then just using a little bit of it along the tips, but it's also blending in with the rest. So the overall effect is kind of a shimmer to the entire painting, which is fun. My daughter walked in on me while I was working on this. She's eight and she's like, mommy, why are you painting with eye makeup? <laughs> and at first I didn't even realize what she was talking about until I looked at what was in front of me and I realized, oh yeah, these things do look a lot like that. Anyway, they're a ton of fun and I'm having a great time using them on this piece. So I just you know, continue to work that in as I move around on the dragon's body, on his wings and along all these leafy, I don't even know what they are. I'm the artist. <laughs> They're sort of leafy wing things because he's a succulent dragon. So there's that. Uh, yeah, more greens, yellows, a little bit of touch of orange here and there. Sometimes I'm mixing in with everything just for some variation in the color. I like to keep things shifting so that it's not just all one solid color. A little bit more of that moss green fine tech along his nose and the tip of his face and along the scales at the back of his neck. And then I'm pulling out this Decorees pen, I believe it is. It's a white gel pen. Usually I, in the past, mostly use Signo. And so this is a different brand than I'm used to, but it is equally opaque and I enjoy it. This is my first time using it. I think I'm going to be using them again in the future. more little details. And then for this upper back wing, I wanted a little bit of contrasting darker colors. So I'm pulling in some plums and purple colors. More shading here and there. Oh yeah, here at this point, I kind of smeared a little bit because I stuck my side of my hand on the edge of that wing. And so I had to go back and do some repair work, which involved just taking a damp brush and lifting along the area that I had smudged. And there were a few other areas that I needed to do the same with. One of the nice things about this surface, this watercolor ground surface, is that you can lift extremely easily. I mean, I guess that could be a downside as well, because if you are careless, like I was just there and smudge my hand across something, it will lift if it is not completely dry. And then some final little touches with the white gel pen. Again, going back in there. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching this painting experiment in action. I hope you enjoyed it. And you can see more videos by subscribing to my YouTube channel, Poimon Law, or by visiting me at patreon.com slash Stephanie Law. This piece was created as part of my current succulent dragon project. And details can be found in the description. Thanks.